This episode of The Dog Show features M. Ganga and Amelia Perry. M and Amelia are part of the team at Dog, a unique and stylish brand dedicated to enriching the daily lives of our canine friends through boutiques, grooming, playtime and accommodation services. Dog has 10 retail boutiques across Australia, an online shop, a range of dog grooming and care services and even a luxury boarding retreat. M joined Dog in 2015 after completing her diploma in animal technology and manages their flagship store in Bondi Junction. Amelia's journey at Dog started in 2012 and she is currently in charge of the wholesale arm of the business where she manages product development, launch strategies and the sales distribution of Dog's unique collections. In the interview, we discuss the current trends in dog pampering, including trends about perspectives, habits, purchasing behavior, fashion, accessories, luxury dog services, and even some predictions about the future of dog pampering. Emily and Amelia from Dog, thank you so much for coming on the dog show today. Thank you for thank having, you having us. us. Yeah, I'm really excited to have a chat. Uh, we're both based in Sydney, but we are doing this from a distance, which is, I guess, something I'm still getting used to, but it should be a bit of fun. Um, before we jump into everything about Dog and all the cool stuff you're doing there, I'd like to chat to you both about your history with dogs a little bit more. Um, maybe we should start with Amelia because you actually have a dog of your own at the moment, I believe. Do you want to tell me a bit more about Diesel? Oh, sure. So, I mean, look, I've, I've always been an animal person. I can't actually remember a time in my life where we didn't have a, at least one dog in our family. Um, and, you know, as a child, I'm actually pretty sure I wanted to be a dog for a few years there. There's a lot of photo evidence of me eating and drinking out of, you know, water bowls and crawling around with, with dog, you know, dog toys in my mouth. So I've always had a pretty positive experience with dogs. And at the moment, I have a bit of a senior at home. So Diesel, he's a, a 12-year-old Labrador cross and he's just, he's my best mate. Mm. Um, you know, w- way too smart for his own good, um, very cheeky and he's he's becoming uh, very bossy in his, his old age as well, which is, you know, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that about wanting to be a dog when you're younger. One of my nephews always yeah. wants to get into our dog's bed for some reason and just cuddle up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the comfiest place, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Do you know what um, Diesel's crossed with? You said Labrador cross. Do you know what the other breed is? Or I do, yes. So he's a Labrador cross Kelpie poodle. So okay. he's a bit of a mix. He was he was a mistake, but he was the, the best <laughs> mistake that, that I could ask for. <laughs> so um, would you say, I guess, if you've had history with Labradors, he, he predominantly acts like a, a Labrador. His personality is similar, or is there a bit of Kelpie and poodle mixed in there as well? Yeah, look, he's got a bit of that kind of cheeky, uh, bossy, kelpie side to him. He's he's pretty in- energetic as well. Um, but then Labrador with food, he's yeah, look, he's a he's an absolute greedy guts. He <laughs> he can't get enough of his food. So he's got a, probably a a good mix of all kind of three breeds, which is nice. Um, and and how has he been? Twelve years old. I imagine you've had you know a long time to see what he's like from a health perspective. I'm always interested to see from like the pure breeds versus the cross breeds, um, how, how that looks like. Is it, have you noticed that he's been more healthy than your traditional pure breeds or? Uh, look, I mean, he's, I, I think he, we've been pretty lucky with him. He's been relatively healthy his, his whole life. And even as a, a 12 year old now, he's still able to go on, you know, his hour and a half weekend walks, you know, around the beaches of Sydney and, um, he's, you know, starting to get a little bit of arthritis, um, and his eyesight's definitely starting to go, but it's really just all been, you know, old age related health issues, not so much anything I think from kind of the mixed breed versus pure breed aspect. Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I guess those things are natural um, that just happen, right, as dogs get older, but well, as as, as we get older as well. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so Emily, strangely enough, you, well, not strangely enough, but for this show, I guess it's strange. You have three cats. Um, I do, yes. And um, I, I did have a border collie, uh, but she passed away about a year ago at 15 and a half. So, she, she oh, did wow. well. Yeah, that yeah. is that is a really good innings, actually. Yeah, <laughs> um, she did well. 
For, I Happy actually we've got cats now. Okay, so um, I actually love the names of your cats though: pineapple, pancake, and prawn. I think it's hilarious, and it just kind of makes a lot of sense to me. I've always wanted to have like a second dog, or I could, you know, you know, combine the names, that kind of stuff. So I'm interested to hear more about, you know, what like I, I don't, I've never had any experience with cats, and I've always kind of like associated being a dog person, you know. But um, yes. I'd like to hear your perspective on how cats and dogs differ and maybe some similarities as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a big part for us, I mean, you have to have a cat to really have that connection with them. Unlike dogs, they don't just go up to anyone. Uh, when you are their owner, though, they are so affectionate. To me, they act like dogs, but I know it's harder for other people to see that um, just because they are a little bit more one owner orientated, unlike dogs are. Um, one thing we that I have focused on is with working at Doug for the past five years is how I can incorporate my knowledge of dogs to my cats. Um, so I've actually taught both my cats, pineapple and pancake. Prawn, we haven't actually got yet. She's still oh. <laughs> um, under the age we can get her. Um, but they can sit, high five, beg and do tricks, um, which I've done with the same training method that we would with a dog. So exactly the same processes. I've managed to do it with the cats. Difference is they need to see the treat to do the tricks, whereas a dog <laughs> will do it for a pat or a prey. So that's a big difference between them two. But it's very interesting to see that they can still do the same things that the dogs do. Yeah, that's I guess, yeah, some dogs would do it without seeing the treat, but not all. <laughs> yeah, not all, but cats, like, I have to show them the treat and they know we're in training mode. Yeah, it's. I guess it's interesting that those instincts are similar the training instincts um yeah it's, it's really cool yeah i really really enjoy um showing people how cats can be they're not just an animal that sort of is not seen which a lot of them do hide they can be a little bit more out there like dogs can be as well yeah so you obviously deliberately named them all the peas and i guess food related things what happens if yeah. you get a fourth cat <laughs> well our dog that we are going to get we've already decided will be called pringle so <laughs> The pea food trends. Very cool. So you have th three cats and a dog in the house. What, what type of dog are you looking when at? When we get a dog, we haven't got it yet, but I've already planned for the name because I know it has to match with our now trending of pea, <laughs> pea food names. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you'll have your hands full definitely with that uh, that household, I'm sure. <laughs> um, okay, so Dog is actually transformed from, you know, a small boutique um accessory business for dogs and now you've got grooming services you've even got like luxury boarding and there's you know there's 10 different retail stores around around sydney but um how did you both end up working for for doe uh, i will jump back to you amelia do you want to do you want to let yeah. give me your story first yeah sure um so my grandparents actually lived in the same street as our ceo margaret hennessy um so i was actually introduced to the business pretty early on. Um, and I just, I, I loved the Doug brand. I thought the name and the logo was the best thing ever. I loved the service offering. Um, so I actually reached out to to Margaret for some work experience towards the end of high school. And I started at the, the Bondi Junction store in, in retail. And, you know, now I click my fingers and it's eight and a half years later and <laughs> I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and Emily? And for myself, um, I'm actually from Adelaide originally. Oh. Um, and five years ago, I decided to make the move to Sydney. The animal industry in Adelaide isn't nearly as strong as it is in Sydney. And I'd done all my studies in Adelaide and knew there was less opportunities. I actually contacted Doge about two months out before I moved over as they were looking for a store manager. Mm. Um, at the time, they said they needed to fill the spot sooner, but to give them a, a message when I got to Sydney. And I did, and it happened that the new manager they hired, it just didn't work out that exact week that I moved over. And again, like Amelia, I clicked my fingers, and it's been five years. It was my anniversary last week. So oh, nice, um, congrats. I, everything I've known about Sydney has also been doing, so it's been amazing. Well, it says a lot about the brand, I guess, that um, you've both been there for so long as well. It must be a good place to work. Um, yeah. And it seems like, and this is what we'll get into next, I guess, it just seems like it's constantly evolving and adapting to the world of, of dogs as it as it evolves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's been it's been a great eight and a half years. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. And the same for, for the five years. Yeah, so. it's been awesome. Yeah. We're very lucky where we work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Amelia, how do you kind of speaking of, of dog and how it's evolved over the years from just accessories to, you know, grooming and services and, you know, luxury boarding and all these different things, how yeah. do you how do you keep your finger on the pulse of those those changing trends in in what dog owners are looking for? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, look, it's it's not easy. Um, in in particular, with with products that you know that product development timeline, especially, can be so long. Um, so you do really need to try and predict, I guess, what products, what colors, what trends are going to work six to twelve months down the track. Um, and you know, we're not we're not always going to get it right, but it definitely helps to be you know always talking and listening to your customers, um, getting as much feedback from them keeping up with, you know, what's happening in the pet industry and the fashion industry, uh, not only in Australia, but also, you know, overseas in America and Europe and just, you know, drawing inspiration from from what they're doing in your customers. That's interesting. So would you draw inspiration from like human fashion as well? Um, but, and then maybe that's not reached the pet industry. Have you seen that happen at all where it kind of transfers across a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think as well, you know, customers are, you know, more often than not wanting to also, you know, match with with their dogs. So um, we definitely take that into consideration when we're designing products, you know, what what is going to be the trends for, for humans in, you know, six to 12 months. And then we try and apply that to to what, you know, you might want for your for your dog as well. So it definitely becomes part of it. I guess that's a trend in itself, that matching. I think um maybe a little while ago matching with your dog was something which um it may have happened but it was more simple these days it's like yes. you're matching everything like in your, even in your house like your home decor all these different things are matching with what your dog has right <laughs> yeah oh, absolutely it's yeah it's becoming a, a lot more popular to to do that and of course we try and yeah design all of our products to to match the the home and the lifestyle as well for our customers so it's pretty important i wonder is do you think that that kind of approach is more prominent in Sydney as well, or do you think it's more of a global thing? Oh, I'm going to say coming from Adelaide, the Sydney's a whole new world compared to um, where a lot of the other states are probably at, let alone around the world. Um, Cause I was very surprised when I moved to Sydney about dog in general, cause I've never seen anything like it. Mm, fair enough. Um, I, I, like, I imagine there's lots of other cities in the world that are, are similar, um, maybe, maybe Melbourne as well, in, in Australia, from an Australian perspective, from that um, the style and fashion side of things. But Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, America and Europe as well, um, you know, you see similar, similar trends. So it's definitely not just Sydney, that's definitely happening all around, all around mm. the globe. Um, what kind of changes have you seen over the last decade, um, you know, apart from the ones we've just discussed there and, and maybe, Em, you can share some insights in the, the in-store environment as well of like um, how kind of perspectives of owners have changed or their habits or maybe their buying experience, that kind of stuff? Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing that we've really noticed, even in the last five years I've been there, is dogs are becoming a much bigger part of the family now. They're more of a family member than a dog that sort of just hangs out in the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and we've noticed, you know, people these days are even leaning towards not having kids and families and their dogs are becoming that member of their family, um, which has been amazing. And it's been shown a lot, especially in things like the type of foods they're feeding them or the products they're wanting to get them. They're wanting the more premium options. They're wanting the the healthier or the better quality stuff for their pets these days. It's not just the the cheap, quick and easy option anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we've also noticed even fun things like being in the store. I've had people come in who are attending dog weddings and they need to get gifts for the, the bride and the groom or um, it's a birthday present they're needing to get. And even if it's for the owner, they'll get a present for the dog instead of for the owner because it makes the owner happy. Um, mm. and that's how their birthday is celebrated. So they're some of the big things we've noticed. Um, even with things like COVID coming into play, we've seen a huge increase in dogs coming into the world. Um, everyone's looking for companionship, which means we've seen an increase, especially in our grooming services um, and our retail services for people needing more things for their dogs these days. So there's been a huge change and we can only see that growing more as dogs aren't going to get any less important in our families. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting you bring up that gifting thing. I know that my wife loves giving our dog a, a Christmas present every year and she's just, it's like... <laughs> the happiest thing of her whole year when she sees our, our dog actually open the present in front of her. <laughs> yeah, my cats have Christmas stockings. Like, yeah. I get it. 
Cecil more often than not has more Christmas presents than me and he actually gets incredibly excited on Christmas morning to open those presents. Yeah. Um, but I do actually remember, I think it was last year, we'd come downstairs in the morning and obviously he'd been up at night because there were some paw prints in some of the presents <laughs> already under the tree. So he just, you know, he couldn't help himself. But it's mm. it's great to kind of, you know, get them so involved in, in those holidays and they do become just such a, such a huge part of your lives. Yeah, I guess you got to be careful if there's any food or chocolate or something in yeah, uh, wrapped up. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I, ne- I haven't heard of a dog wedding before, actually. Though. Were you referring to like dogs partaking in human weddings or were you talking were about dogs getting dogs married? Getting married? <laughs> dogs I'm not getting heard of that. Married. I had one date store where I think I had about four different people coming in who were actually attending the same wedding saying, oh, we need a gift for a dog wedding. And I was like, no, like there's nothing surprises me anymore in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a new level. Um, I don't know how, whether the dogs are deciding if that's their choice or not. I think it's an arranged marriage. If <laughs> yeah, you <must> <laughs> I think so. I think so. Um, so I guess you mentioned, Em, about, you know, the future as well and th- dogs continually getting more important in our lives and us wanting to, to, I guess, invest more money and time into them. Is there anything else that you, you both see as you know trends moving forward in this space yeah yeah i mean i think you know dogs as em said like they're not just part of the family now but they're actually becoming a lot more involved in our everyday lives so i think that you know that demand for you know more retail and service offerings um we're going to start to see you know more businesses in other unrelated industries try and enter the pet industry um you know the push towards more dog friendly venues and spaces so pubs and uh restaurants and i mean you know five years from now i'd love to be able to see you know dogs entering shopping centers and you know being able to travel on public transport i think there's you know a lot of exciting kind of change ahead um and that is really to because you know dogs are such that you know integral part of our lives now yeah it's interesting when you go to like uh the united states for example and you can fly on a plane domestically with your dog or you can <laughs> that'd be so cool go into yeah. the supermarket um and i know that you know i I remember where I was like, I can't remember where I was, it was somewhere not far away from Sydney on a little getaway with our dog one day and we're standing outside, she was really hot and she was overheating so I was like, I need to take her into the air-conditioned supermarket um, and they kicked me out and I'm like, look, my dog's like about to kill over here, can I just stay here for five minutes to cool her down? It's such a different yeah. way of thinking but you, might, I mean, I hope you're right, I hope, I hope it does keep moving towards us. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. I mean, I was able, I, I visited America um, a few years ago and I was just stunned at what I, you know, I was seeing dogs in, in cafes sitting up at the table next to the human <laughs> having a, you know, a baby Chino, a doggy Chino, so to speak. <laughs> and um, I think when we were coming home, there was, you know, a poodle being let on into first class and, <laughs> you know, here I am back in back in coach. So they are really leading the way in terms of, um, you know, dogs really being part of yeah, your, your everyday lives, which is which is incredible. It's probably hard because I think you've got to change the, the perspectives of people here though. Like, for example, if they saw a dog in Woolies or something like that, they would be like, well, what, what's going on here? Yeah, isn't it? That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are some restaurants and stuff that are starting to do like dog de- degustations and those kind of things though, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which is cool. Um, I'm interested to hear more about, I guess, dog now that we've talked generally about dog trends and all that kind of stuff um do you want to give me a bit more of a an understanding of your process for creating new products and and all of that kind of stuff and and how they end up getting to market yeah sure i mean we i think like nowadays we've really been focusing on australian made australian made products i think now more than ever we're seeing more and more consumers coming into stores wanting to know where products are made um what they're made from and how they're made so for us that's been um a really like a crucial driver when it comes to product development so we we already have a few australian made ranges we've got a leather walkwear range some health and beauty products and a new treat range as well that have been perceived really really great um and it's just becoming yeah increasingly popular to have those authentic aussie made products so that is i guess has really been the forefront for us when it comes to design um and you know making sure we're we're incorporating that into our our product plans for the next you know six to twelve months and into the future yeah that's interesting because i think um especially with the year that we've had people are more 
Absolutely. cognizant of that. But also, you know, there's so much, there's still uncertainty, right, around the, how the global yes. economic environment will, will keep operating. So, yeah, um, which we've absolutely. noticed in stores as well with that in getting in products that are from overseas and things like that, who we would usually have a really good relationship with, mm -hmm. even just the wait time on being able to receive those products into Australia. I uh, put a real strain on this winter, especially with winter products and things. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely going to have to adapt to more Australian products um, for that reasoning as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sense. definitely. Um, so what would you tell someone that wanted to know more about Doge? Where should they start? How can they familiarize themselves with the brand? And then what should they do first to actually interact with you? Let me go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> It's, a, it's an interesting that one because there are such different aspects to Doge. So from where I stand, I work in one of the stores. Um, we're pretty well known mostly in our stores for our grooming and our daycare facilities um, with the retail on the side, of course. Um, so from my point of view, it's the increase in dogs and the love of dogs is the grooming world, basically. So people come to Doge to get their dogs groomed. Um, one of the challenges, however, for our future of grooming is not having uh, international travellers. Much like the hospitality industry, we rely heavily on our inter, uh, inter sorry, overseas uh, workers um, for our grooming teams and things like that. So it is going to be a really interesting next 12 months on how that industry survives as strongly as it has been, especially with the increase in dogs coming into uh, Australia. Um, so we are working on that challenge at the moment, um, as well as the decrease in need for playtime and daycare services with more people being at home as well, looking after their own dogs. So we are doing a bit of a, a restructure and adapting to how we can with it and doing a really strong focus on things like our products and other ways that we can be helping um, animal lovers to keep the care for their dogs as strong as possible. Um, so this is probably a side note, but as you were talking about the international travel, that kind of stuff, I mean, Bondi, where, where your store is, is obviously a very tourist kind of driven area have you noticed a decrease in retail i guess it's hard to tell because retail probably decreased in general anyway but have you noticed like a significant decrease in kind of tra foot traffic or um i'd love to say yes but um i would love to we've been incredibly lucky it's really shown the resilience of our business as well as the resilience of the pet industry mm. we actually stayed incredibly busy through covid um with some of our stores including our own doing record breaking months mm. during the midst of covid um I think it was just due to the fact of people not being able to spend on themselves. They have that care for their dogs, so they wanted to keep spoiling their dogs more than ever and being home with them more. It was, oh, they should have a bed in every room or, <laughs> you know, let's be feeding them now the best quality food because I have the time to focus on my dog more than I probably did before. So the pet industry in general actually flourished quite well during COVID, mm. um, which I think is a good thing because it really showed how much people really do care for their pets. Yeah, and I think as I was thinking about it, I guess most people that are, are pet owners are probably not tourists anyway. So Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, I would yeah. say so. I mean, definitely the foot traffic you can see a decrease on, but mm. honestly, we were incredibly lucky and we really worked well as a company to um, strive as the best as we could during the hardest times of COVID. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not not to say that, you know, we didn't have – challenges our fair share of challenges yeah. during this time there there definitely was we had to shut all of our our melbourne stores mm. of course and and we did lose quite a bit of revenue as well through um our retreat not being able to really cater for for dogs because no one was going on holidays so it was a, a really kind of interesting time but i guess it really forced us to then think of other ways that 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 business could operate so for example the treat the retreat um would then just focus on playtime and grooming which they've you know, not really focused on before in the past, but it's actually turned out to to um, be a good thing for them in terms of kind of diversifying that that model. So you just kind of you learn to adapt yeah. to to what's happening. But um, as as Em said, you know, the the pet industry and our business has ended up being um really resilient, which is which mm. is great. Yeah. What does the experience look like at the retreat? If I was to to book my dog into the retreat, what yeah, what what happens next? I wish they had a human one on the side. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a beautiful big property up in the Southern Highlands. Um, the way I explain it to customers when they ask me about it in store is it's not really a kennel. It's a beautiful big farm where they've got amples of space to be able to run around, 
get to bond with other dogs. One thing I have noticed um, being in the midst of Bondi, I would say the dogs are very humanized, which is great, but it's a place where they can sort of go back to being a dog, run around and get dirty on a farm. They have their own individual suites, which they get to stay in. They have a big room where they've got TVs and couches. I've had customers explain it to me as a fat camp. So <laughs> some of the dogs go there and they get, get into better shape from all the exercise <laughs> they're doing. So um, it's really wonderful. And you can just see how happy the dogs are when they go down there. It's, it's such a nice place to send your pets if you need them to go somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's a home away from home, yeah. really. Like, and, and that's what everyone wants when they're, when they're traveling. They just want to make sure that their you know, dogs are as well looked after as they can be. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. the retreat definitely offers that. Absolutely. Do you, do you find um, there are any personality issues with some dogs? Do you have a vetting process for what dogs are allowed to come? <laughs> yes. yes. Um, all dogs who come in for playtime and grooming and the retreat, they do have to be have come in for an assessment beforehand. I mean, like kids at daycare, not everyone's going to get along, but it's more weaning out. Not the dogs that don't get along, but it's about if they're having a good time too. And sometimes playtime, sometimes sending them away isn't good for the dog themselves. They just don't enjoy it. And it's finding alternative options for them. Um, like having a dog walker come and pick them up for an hour rather than leaving them in daycare all day. Um, some of them just don't settle and it's not fair on the dog to put them through that. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think... If I was to summarize what we just discussed about getting to know Doug as a new person that hasn't heard of you before, I would say if you're close by one of the retail stores, go and check it out, especially Bondi because you get to meet Em if she's yeah, around. Me, yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, jump on the website, doug.com.au, which I'll share in the notes um, and just familiarize yourself with all the amazing things you're doing because there's a lot going on, but it all it all channels down that kind of same brand around dog pampering and looking after, tra treating your treating your dog or your pet like a um, prince or princess, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. We would like to, we basically would like to call ourselves a community of passionate dog lovers who are motivated to provide the best care for all of our four-legged friends. It's how we summarised ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good summary, much better than the one I gave. <laughs> um, so is there anything anywhere else people can, can check out what you're doing or does it sound like the website's the best place to go for now? Websites, yeah, pretty good place to, to kind of get an understanding of what we do and who we are, but definitely also give us a follow on, on Instagram and Facebook for, you know, all of our awesome doggy content. <laughs> um, and that handle is at Club Dog, so people can find us there. Yeah, perfect. Well, I'll share that as well. Um, Great. Thank you. So, Em and Amelia, thank you so much for coming on the dog show today. I've had an absolute exciting time myself, and I hope you have as well. I've learned a lot about dog, but also about the trends in dog pampering and just the dogs in general. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thanks, Will. It's been, yeah, it's yeah, been, a been awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Will. Bye. Bye.